This is a very special game. It's the last time we seniors get to step on this field. The last time we play at home. And the last time we get to make that game-changing play. This is the last time to make a statement. This is the moment that we have been waiting for. To make that memory that lasts forever. And to prove that we are ready for one more. Welcome back to another great episode of Third Down Chirp, delivered by Papa John's. I'm your host, Luke Martin, alongside Zach Hughes, Tyler Bradfield. As you can tell, it's Black Friday for the big game against Miami of Ohio, so we are donning the black colors in support of the big game Friday. But a tough loss for the Cardinals and DeKalb. It's been a little while for us to think about that <laughs> loss, but still there's a lot to play for if you're the Ball State football Cardinals. Well, a lot to play for if you're the Cardinals, and you shouldn't be too upset. You go into the number 15th ranked team in the, in the nation, and you're in the game in the fourth quarter. It was a very close game. You, you should be proud if you're a Ball State Cardinal. The chance for 10 wins in this season against Miami, they got to capitalize, they got to get a win. It's just as important as if they would have beaten Northern Illinois. To have a chance to win 10 games, that's really important. But let's focus on that loss to the North Illinois with our recap graphic, as you can see now on the screen. The Cardinals, it was a tough loss for Ball State, losing by 21 points. But it was much closer than the 21-point spread set at the end of the game. And no doubt, Central Michigan, that's going to be a great game as well. But that has a lot to do. It's, it's got a lot to live up to the billing. As a big game a couple weeks ago at Schumann Stadium, when Sigma Chi, the intramural football team, took home their third championship in four years. Want to talk about a dynasty? Well, they were led by quarterback, uh, what was his name? Zach Hughes, led by quarterback. So the oh quarterback my. guru here at Ball State, Rich Skrowski, he got his hands on Zach Hughes' film, and he has a couple of tips for Zach Hughes to improve his quarterback skills. Yo, let's go right now. Sigma Chi 18 is about to kill this. Let's go. Hey, Zach, how you doing? Coach Skrowski here. Zach, I had a chance to watch the video that you sent me about you playing quarterback. Um, first thing is stick to communications. Uh, no, nah, I'm just teasing. Zach, there were some good things to really watch on your film. And, and first and foremost, the best thing you do is you get rid of the ball pretty quickly. You know, you kind of keep it up high and you get rid of it. Couple hey things that I think maybe you can help you. Uh, first and foremost, you're not using your whole body. You're just using uh, your, your arm. And what I mean by that, Zach, is this. Uh, take Keith Wenning, for instance. Keith uh, probably gets most of the velocity on his ball because he generates so much power from his midsection, his core. And the way he generates that power is by taking his left side and kind of torquing it through so that his right hip could get through. So the biggest thing I would work on with you, Zach, is this. Take your left elbow and try to keep it tight as you're releasing the ball and create a torquing action with your midsection. And if you create enough force, and they'll show the video later on, you'll literally lift your right foot off the ground as you throw, similar to what maybe a pitcher would do, but without the, the enormous stride length. It's hard to tell on the, on the video what kind of grip you have, but it seems like the ball's coming out with a pretty good spiral. And then the thing that I'm so impressed with, you're such a competitive guy. So even in intramurals at Ball State, the football programs are pre pretty competitive. Keep working hard, Zach.
folks. We just don't <laughs> sit at the desk and just talk about football. Zach Hughes goes out and play, buddy. How about those? How about those skills? Uh, you didn't show me that before this. This is like a shock to me. But th- thanks for doing that for me, Luke, filming it, and and thanks, Coach Skrowski, for the pointers. I'll, I'll have to implement those in in the indoor league. Well, you might be on your way to a Division One scholarship if you keep working. I saw the highlights. You're winning. You're doing good. <laughs> winning, indeed. I think Keith winning. He's kind of feeling the pressure. <laughs> But now third down chirp gets to make a Ball State alum proud. We're going to make David Letterman proud because we got our own top 10 list here on third down chirp. But it's the top 10 plays of the Ball State football season. And let's get it going. And it's going to start at number 10 with a guy who's made a lot of great plays this year. And that is none other than Jordan Williams against Miami of Ohio. 72 yards right before halftime. Puts Ball State up big, and Jordan Williams on the day. He finished with five receptions for 161 yards and two touchdowns. That game put him over 1,000 yards receiving on the year, Zach. Number nine comes from that Northern Illinois game. Jordan Lynch fires a pass downfield, but here comes Eric Patterson to strip it, and Brian Jones recovers, keeping Ball State in that game on national TV against Northern Illinois. Number eight, we go all the way back to week one against Illinois State as Jared Barnett drops back. Eric Patterson will tip it, and then it's picked off by Ben Engel, and he returns it down the near sideline. The only interception this season for Ben Engel as he takes the hit there on the sideline. Ben Engel, huge on the Ball State defense this year. Number seven, okay, who says just Scott Secor goes out, does kicks off, and kicks field goals? Right here against Miami of Ohio, the last game of the regular season. Scott Secor with a booming hit and forces a fumble, which allows Ball State to get another touchdown before halftime. Scott Secor with the huge hit on special teams. Number six comes from that rainy Central Michigan ESPN2 game. The first of many plays from Willie Sneed on the countdown, basically being tackled out of bounds, still comes up with a huge catch to lead to the Ball State win over the rival Central Michigan. Number five, we stay with Willie Sneed against Akron. Look at the grab here. Only needs one hand. Look at the focus. Look at the hands. In the court of the end zone, Sneed's in at number five. And if he doesn't catch that, that hits me right in the face. Number four on the countdown, top 10. All Ball State fans remember this. Deadlocked at 24 in the third quarter against Virginia until Jawan Edwards with a big touchdown run. The celebration would follow as Ball State upset Virginia by 21 points, Zach. Staying in that same game, Luke. Keith winning, trying to find someone downfield. Well, just go ahead and throw it up to who? Willie Sneed goes vertical over the Virginia defender and comes up with a huge grab. Number two, we go back to the Miami game, the season finale. It's Jamil Smith with the acrobatic catch. Check it out here. How does he do it? Only the 5'7 wide receiver goes up top and makes the grab, twisting backwards. And number one, arguably the biggest catch on the season for Willie Sneed. Maybe the catch that saved the season as Willie Sneed, the seven yard reception, which got the huge win for Ball State over Kent State. And that ends the top 10 plays of the year. Well, we had so much fun on the show with the fans going out and asking a coach and a player a question. We're going to do it again. And here are some Ball State students with questions for some Ball State football players and coaches. My question is for Willie Sneed, and I want to know what his favorite dance move to bust out at the nighttime is. Uh, uh dance move, dance move. I'll probably, probably do a little jig or something, you know. I'll just probably get a little lean and stuff, you know. <laughs> I'm not much of a dancer. I'm not, I'm not the dancing type, but, you know, I like to have fun. This question's for Jordan Williams. Which wide receiver would go out trick-or-treating and eat all their candy that same night? Uh, I think it would be Jamil, because... <laughs> Jamil, he he has his uh he has his kid moments and uh, he's he has some at heart kid moments like for real and uh, he he was talking about it earlier just about how he wants some candy and stuff so. Hi, my question's for Nate Ollie and I was just wondering um, if the squad had an eating competition, who would win? Uh, we eat some pizza, some chicken. Uh, man, that's hard. Let me see. I'm have to say me. I like to eat. I have to say I probably win the eating competition because I like to eat. Hi, my question's for Brian Jones. What is your ideal first date? Horse carriage ride, you know, probably downtown, see the scenery, the lights and stuff like that, nice dinner, a movie, then a nightcap, and that's about it. My question is for Coach Krosky. What is your pre-game hype-up song? My biggest before-game relaxation is read. 
to be honest with you. I, the music, I, yeah, before a game, never was like that either. So reading is what kind of puts me in my zone, getting me ready for a game. So I apologize to the fan. 